Okay, my name is uh, Bashiru Bonfo. I'm uh, the director of uh, Centre de Recherche Scientifique uh, in Côte d'Ivoire, and I'm also coordinating a program called AFRICUAN, which is dealing with the capacity building of young researchers in Africa. I don't know how. It's not working, huh? Okay, so uh, I'm from Côte d'Ivoire, Abidjan, and this is where uh, the Sun Suisse is located, and we have uh, a lot of partners, and I hope that after this uh, meeting, I will have uh, the Swedish uh, uh, partners uh, to take uh, along with our agenda. We have uh, more than 170 uh, collaborators from uh, 27 uh, nationalities. And we do all kinds of research. We are interdisciplinary research, and uh, we are supported by the Swiss government and the Ivorian government, but with the regional and African agenda. It's fully African-led institution uh, today. So uh, I just want to talk today about addressing priorities in intervention design and some of the struggle in our countries and also share with you some of the regional dynamics and uh, finish with the take home message. So on priorities, if you look at the global problem compared to the local, we have been talking about emerging diseases with high resource allocation, but sometimes we tend to forget the endemic ones which are affecting the more poor uh, people. And for us, it's very important as a research center also to look at those very specific endemic issues where others are looking at emerging one. And there are also areas of uh, non-communicable diseases. And also what is very important today with the poor in terms of uh, the livelihood of people is the impact of some of the disease on the assets and the economics of the poor people. Uh, for example, Newcastle disease that affect uh, poultry or pest deputy ruminant that affect small ruminants. And those kind of things has also a real impact, not only on the livelihood, but on the health of the population, because this is where they get uh, their resources uh, from. And then uh, if we look at these trajectories, uh, what uh, Brian Perry called hot spots and cold spots, we still have a very big challenges in the animal health services uh, system, the livestock movement, because our frontiers are not uh, uh, well uh, uh, established. And uh, the infrastructures is also a big uh, challenge. And that's why uh, at African Union, uh, they have decided to set a, an agenda that take into account the major uh, constraints, not only disease prevention, but putting food security as one of the leading agenda and also, as uh, uh, it has been said before, bringing uh, the research agenda or, or the, the priority and the autonomy of research in Africa so that we can set together, together the agenda. But the main challenge is how to fund uh, the strategy of the, the agenda with the local funding, because we have funding coming from outside and we are struggling to bring our government to fund uh, research and uh, intervention. But when we design also health intervention, it's very important that we look at what people face on the ground. We cannot bring health services avoiding to know what is the real problem like nutrition in the agricultural sector, the perception of the population and how they behave uh, in relation to the uh, health package we are, we are bringing to them. So in designing, we have to take into account the perception and the perspective, the knowledge of the local uh, po population. And now, uh, for us in the governance, we, if we take uh, the One Health concept, on its own is health governance, because we have to put uh, many entities together to achieve an impact or to have uh, another value. But it's in, this, uh, in trying to do this that our uh, national institute and regional institute are trying to, to set up uh, different partnership. But when we look at partnership, I think it's very 
important to consider the agenda setting. And the basic principles are uh, building on mutual trust. This is something we need to, to, to consider. And also the social responsibility on some of the diseases, be it emerging or endemic. We should not consider uh, the importance of the disease only when it jumps the border. We have to uh, maintain, contain the disease before it jumps. And this is where we call the social responsibility in that uh, end. And another issue which is very important is to build the local institution capacity. And we tend to have projects, program, project sites, and after three years, four years, six years, everything collapsed and we have to restart. And it's very important uh, alongside the program to build on the very local institution that will take the leadership and move forward and take into account the basic uh, endemic problem uh, before the, 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 the coming ones. And if you look at this transboundary research partnership, uh, the Swiss Academy of uh, uh, Science has established 11 principles, and those principles are very important, and we call uh, our partners to look carefully on that, and on the most cri critical one, which is uh, the first one setting the agenda uh, together. So coming to the training and capacity, the African Academy of Science has raised the uh, saying that if you want to achieve the capacity and take research leadership, we need to train up to thousand, from thousand to million PhDs in Africa. But how do we go about that? And it's very imp important to consider that capacity building is very important. And in that training, we need capacity in social science, capacity in one health, because our generation is not the one who, which will lead the One Health agenda. It's the next generation, and we need to train people to think system and to collaborate and add value to what they, they, they are doing. Another thing which is very important to consider in Africa is the retaining expertise. And today we have schools, veterinary school, medical school, people are trained, but they tend to go to international organizations and our local organizations are weak, and the impact on the health system is, is weakened because of this capacity. The small capacity we have is still used for uh, something else. And some of the disciplines are not covered in terms of uh, social science and economics, uh, which are very important uh, to consider alongside the epidemiology or other type of uh, health system. And now we are facing new institution and initiative. If you look at uh, who is who in One Health, we have up to 95 institutions uh, that we are struggling to collaborate with now in Africa. We have many initiatives on One Health, and sometimes uh, our governments are overwhelmed with all these kind of uh, 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 organization, and we need to set up uh, a very strategic way uh, on seeing how we can uh, move uh, forward. And for that, there are some of the local aspects to be considered beyond diagnostics, drugs, and vaccines. If you look uh, sometimes at drugs or vaccines, they are very efficacious, but the government has to struggle to look at uh, the condition that those drugs or vaccine work in terms of infrastructures, culture, community health workers that can accompany the, the efficacy or the effectiveness of, uh, of the drug. The second thing is beyond the free treatment. Sometimes we tend to say, okay, treatment is free, but there are other factors that uh, in increase the cost to the communities. If you look at the TB treatment, it's something which is very important. The dust uh, works, but it needs additional funding uh, from the communities to, uh, to be more effective. So I will jump on the, uh, this one and talk about the milk and saying that uh, sometimes uh, to address the public health issues, we need incentives in economics so that people can know that what they gain and to protect uh, the, the consumers. And one of the political will, which is very important, is uh, a decision in funding. And the rabies for us today in Africa is one example of one health intervention. We need to start from there because it's easy. We know what to do. We know how to do it. But why we are not doing that? 
why we are putting money some, uh, somewhere else, because it's very important to try with one disease and show that it, it works. And the last aspect just I, I want to tell you is the dynamics of uh, uh, the funders. We have funding from the Wellcome Trust with the consortium of uh, 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 donors to look at uh, the capacity in Africa. And we have been looking at the trend uh, of diseases, how we move from the, uh, the knowledge of the disease off to the elimination, looking at the elimination pathways. And we have now established the Pan-African Research uh, Capacity Program on One Health uh, with 52 fellows uh, who will be trained in One Health, and we are now currently running a massive open online courses on One Health, which is, uh, uh, will last for the next uh, four, four weeks. And in Africa, we have also uh, some of the dynamics with African uh, uh, CDC, which is established, taking into account uh, uh, the health system. But there we have a problem of leadership and, again, the capacity and ethics in data sharing and so on. And at the regional level of uh, ECOWAS, Economic Organization of Africa, we have also a good dynamics with the ministries taking the One Health as uh, a, an agenda for the countries to take uh, into account uh, the One Health in all the, the system. But the take home message that I want to tell you here is that we have uh, country priorities linked to global health, which is very important to, to, to consider. And resource allocation should also consider sharing those resources between sectors. And we need also to look carefully on the leadership when we talk about One Health. And the capacity building of institutions uh, is very uh, important. And we have to consider the local disease threats and the global responsibility in detection, prevention, and uh, response. And avoiding fund allocation bias in One Health, uh, which is something that we are facing now because all money is going to emerging diseases on one health, but we tend to forget what is the real problem locally. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosita, for, for, for your words. I was thinking of uh, one of the challenges that you were talking about. People are trained, but they're not going to build local capacity. They're going to international organizations. So how, how do you turn around this thing? How do you keep them within locally rather than sort of? I think we need uh, uh, good incentives. Intensives are, incentives are very important. If you ask me, mm. you give me a salary to work for WHO or FAO and uh, at the local uh, organization and you balance what yeah. th th is the offer. If the WHO is not talking with the local institution, then we turn off uh, uh, unbalancing the, 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 the system. But where we need to put uh, effort is a massive capacity building training at the vet school. If you look today uh, in West Africa, for example, the epidemiologists are taken by most of the international organizations, and we lack local staff to handle the, the problems. So for me, I think if you, it's not just to say, okay, don't go to international organization, but if we have many people, we will at least have some to remain in the local organization. But is there, is there a sort of, a, should the VHO pay less or pay the local organization money so they can hire those people? Or is there a, some kind I think of solution for this? Because you can clearly understand that people, if they get much more salary somewhere else, they might go there. I think for me, what will be good is not to build parallel institution or strong organization. Uh, international organizations are doing good, they are doing very good work, but the moment they tend to build parallel system, this is where the local ones are weakened. So if it's embedded in the local organization for the very specific program in the local organization, I think things will. Uh, that's a good good idea. Thank yeah. you. Mm. Okay, thank you very much, Pasiro. If you do, you have any questions in the audience? Are you awake yet? Have you got your coffee? Comments on this or questions? We have microphones in the audience. You can just wave at the gentleman in the back. 
Thank you. Sorry for monopolizing this microphone on the second day. But uh, I just wanted to ask you, what would you suggest, suggest as a strategy for shifting the focus from emerging diseases to endemic diseases? You, you made a strong criticism there, but what do you think people in this room should do to achieve that? I think both are important. It's not that uh, maybe I, m I made it uh, wrong. It's important to look at the emerging one, but we should not forget the impact of the endemic ones. This is the message I want to do. If you have a program in a, in a country, sometimes you learn from more from the endemic one that will help you to tackle the emerging one. But if you don't know how to handle the endemic one, <laughs> Uh, I don't know how you, you are going to, to manage a disease that you don't even know how it will affect you. I think both are important, and, and those today, are the pathways. And today they are not treated equally in importance. In terms of research, yes, but resource allocation, no. So <laughs> we have a lot of job to do. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome.